YouTube. So, I've got a shot of this Antoria Gibson Les Paul Custom. Um, this is kind of right up my street, really. Uh, so, serial number says made in Japan on the neck. It's, it's a boat on neck. Got a little bit of buckle rash in the back. Maybe used by some Judas Priest fan with a massive belt buckle. Um, yeah, so the serial number starts K76. So, if, if I go by Japanese serial numbers, I think K stands for the month, and 76 would either be seven for 76, 1976, or it could be, the 7 could be for 77, so I'd say 76, 77 for this. Got a very, um, this bit thing here reminds me very much of uh, Transformers. It's kind of like an elongated Decepticons logo, I think. Um, you would argue that this could be past the lo lawsuit era because it doesn't have a Gibson shaped headstock even though there wasn't really a lawsuit um, it's kind of it was against Ibanez that lawsuit there's tons of stuff written about it all the things that say lawsuit era kind of doesn't really exist because you don't really oh, lawsuit era I suppose does but there weren't really there weren't any guitars that actually had a lawsuit on them because Gibson met, wrote to Ibanez because they were uh but by that point, I think they'd already changed their headstock to something more similar to this. Um, by that point, they were making their own guitars anyway, so not really that bored about doing copies. So this kind of, it's sort of similar to basically any of these black Les Paul Customs. I had a Grant one. Um, one of the reasons I've got it is my pal, well, he, what he doesn't he didn't tell me was... Um, That volume, the volume control for the neck pickup isn't brilliant. Um, when you put it up to full, it cuts out. So I don't know whether that seems to work for the rest of the travel. So I might contact cleaner, might clean it. Uh, so as long as I don't put the volume up to 10, if I keep it at 9, it doesn't cut out. Um, he, one, of the, one of the reasons he gave it to me is I think he's going to sell this, but he wants to make sure that these pickups aren't very expensive ones, which they might be. And looking at it, the tuners have been replaced with ping tuners and I've not really heard of ping but I think they're expensive um, so I think if you've changed the tuners the bridge also looks uh, a little bit modern and expensive so I think it might be um, that might even be a Gibson bridge uh, so it's been up upgraded at some point so I would think that if you were upgrading the tuners you'd be upgrading the pickups as well. Basically that was the thing I was saying about the Grant when I had. Grant, although it's the same guitar as Antoria's and Ibanez and CSL and stuff like that, you could, when you ordered these things from the factory, you could spec what parts you wanted on it and I think the Grant one had really cheap parts. The tuners were like ones that were just really tin. They were actually the one I had had gold hardware and the gold had turned into, it looked like, it kind of looked like sellotape, old sellotape on it or something like that for the gold bits. It's kind of like you know, not gold plated, sort of gold painted. More like there's no sign of that in this one, but um just that the the parts on first looking look more expensive, so I think it's been upgraded all the way. So I'll have before I take it to bits and find out whether it does have expensive pickups in it. It wouldn't surprise me if there were um Gibson pickups from round about that time because you didn't really get well, you didn't get aftermarket pickups back in the late 70s. Uh, you could buy DiMarzio's and that was kind of it. So anyone who put new pickups into a guitar, like a lower end guitar like this, I reckon came from somebody's had a Gibson Les Paul or something, they bought DiMarzio's for it and they've sold the old pickups or they've put the old pickups into their other guitar. I've had this a few times with um, sort of early, the late 70s, early 80s guitars where they've got a pickup upgrade because you didn't have an option, you didn't have Warmans and Wilkinsons and all that, your only option was to buy DiMarzio's, uh, pretty much. Um, so I mean, just going by the sound, um, playing through the wee Laney BC-15, that 3x12 cabinet, no pedals on. So, I'm pretty sure these are not the original pickups, um, but then again, I'm not sure how Antori expect it. If you look on the back, it does have two screw holes, implying it had the older style tuners, you know, the ones that have just like got a a cover on the back, um, which is what the Grant would have had. The Grant also had um, fake humbuckers, so they looked like humbuckers, but actually when you took the cover off, there was only one coil behind it, uh, so it was like kind of a single coil in a humbucker casing. 
obviously to make it slightly cheaper. Um, these obviously are proper humbuckers. Um, <laughs> And then there's a few there's wooden blocks and then there's a piece of plywood bent over the top so it's kind of glued around the outside. So I'm not sure yet, because I've not been inside this yet, I'm going to have to go into it. Um, contact cleaner might sort these pots. Uh, <laughs> custom on the headstock. Whoever it was cut out the see there's, there's chips round about the tuners. Um that's that's what happens because he's put in this type of tuner, the ones that have got like a bolt that holds the top down. Um 
so th they've got like a wider hole. So he said, whoever has upgraded this has had to enlarge the holes, and they've chipped away. They've chipped away the paint at the front. Um, not not a biggie, but uh, I mean, it's one of those things that you start wondering if. When my pal was talking about, you know, maybe they, they, some, someone, I think someone told them there were Gibson pickups or Seymour Duncans or something, I don't know. Depends on the back. It might not be really obvious. I mean, back in this era, they don't actually have Gibson written on the back. That would be that would be too easy, so you don't get that. Um, normally, I've had the few I've had before with, with Gibson pickups in it. I bought my Arbiter Flying V, which is a kind of similar sort of thing, but it was a Flying V. And my Aria Urchin both had Gibson pickups in them, and there was like a serial number ink stamped on the back of one of them. And um, I just put it into Facebook. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what this is, and then immediately come back going, Yes, serial number, blah blah blah, to blah blah blah, it's 1975 Gibson from a guitar X or whatever. <laughs> Of all the sort of Japanese copy guitars, this is probably a bit the nicest one. Actually, it doesn't really seem to, apart from the fact that the volume controls doesn't work, it doesn't seem to be any issues. Obviously, by having a boat on neck, it's worth way less money than one with a set neck. Even though I don't think it makes any difference to the way the guitar plays, in some ways, in many ways, a boat on neck's neck is actually better. But generally, the, the cheaper to make a guitar with a boat on neck so normally the ones you get with a set neck are generally a more expensive guitar all round kind of the way of thinking also being a boat on neck lots of people will be like you're all boat on neck well you can't boat on neck let's pull oh no oh no it's awful it's like, that's not the case I mean this absolutely wipes the floor with any set neck yet the phone's ever played it's even sort of lighter and more um what? It doesn't sound like a Les Paul. It's actually much easier to play than a Les Paul, so it must have some slight different dimensions in it. So basically this will be part one. Um, I don't know whether will I do a video of me take it to bits. I mean, I'll take some pictures of you but if you look on them. Well, so you're not, if you look on the, the vintage Japanese guitar site or something. I used to be a member of a Facebook site called Guitar Universe which I think just disappeared. It was really good because it was just guitars any guitars whereas all the other ones are members of it's like pure oh it's a Yamaha site or it's a bit 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 uh, this was just like a general could be anything on it and that was what I found out about the, the previous Gibson pickups I'm not sure but I mean most of the people who collect Japanese stuff which is the Facebook sites I'm on you know this kind of stuff um, don't only have Japanese guitars most people have like a Gibson well, there's a lot of people that have kind of what I've got where you've got like a Gibson and a Fender just to sort of justify the fact that you know what you're talking about and then swathes of Japanese guitars mm -hmm. or you get occasional people that already have a Fender Strat, a Fender Tele, a Gibson Les Paul, a Gibson T35, a Gibson, you know, they've got those guitars. So because they've kind of got good versions of all of them, they've kind of tried to expand into other things and that's when people end up buying these sort of things, you know, sort of just for something a little bit different. Um, so that's, um, yeah, it's playing brilliantly. And I will sort out the two volume controls. Really nice if I just cleaned up the contact cleaner. This gets kind of weird as we both of them do exactly the same thing though. So you get when you put it to pull back, there's an issue. Seems to be fine all the way up to there. Then up at, up at full, it's like it's, when, it, when it hits the end, it's just it's just cutting out the whole thing. I wouldn't actually be surprised if maybe the pot's wired wrong. Maybe, because um, you do put an earth on the pot to earth it when it's completely at zero. So I wonder if what it's doing instead of earthing it when the pot's at zero, it's earthing it when the pot's at maximum. Uh, I know when I get into it. But I do 
do like Antonia guitars. The two that I've come across so far, I've got my telly there, which I can see, but it's got stuff sitting on top of it, so I'm, I'm not going to bother trying to dig it out. Um, you've seen it before. It's a cream Telecaster I've got Antonia as well. Um, as in for factory, not sure. Um, I'm sure the, the serial number starts in K. I'm trying to think of what guitars I've got that I've got a serial number that starts with a letter. I think Ibanez. I think I've got Ibanez. I think I've got a. I'm sure my Ibanez Destroyer starts K85. Um, I think I've got Arias that might do it as well. So it's one of those ones that. I'm not sure of the factory. It might be a Tushin. Um, I don't. I don't know. There'll be, there will be experts out there who specialise more in this. I'm kind of like, I don't really specialise, but I'm more into the sort of slightly later. Like the, in the 70s, Japan were making copies, you know, Kelly Strats, Les Pauls, and then towards the end of the 70s, they start making their own designs. And then sort of towards the end, early 80s, they, they were all making their own designs, your Ibanez, Arias, Washburns, all that were all original designs. And then um, by the time it got to sort of 86, 87, the Jap there was something happened to the economy. Uh, like exchange rates and stuff changed about and suddenly Japanese guitars became very expensive and what they did was they moved everything to Korea and started making really cheap guitars, kind of what we now know as modern guitars, whereas at this this point this was kind of like your only option that wasn't a Gibson Les Paul, was to get a copy and they made it as good as they could um, rather than making it as cheap as they could, which is what happened later on I'm thinking I had another point I was going to say there and I got sidetracked there but I can't remember what it was I'll maybe do it in the second part of the video it might even be the end of this video um, if I can find something interesting uh, like if they do say just like but nice if it just said Gibson on the back or Seymour Duncan or something like that but it's just not going to be that easy um, but it's kind of like it's one of those things that you, you pick up these guitars you see they, they go for a, a wildly varying amount of money um, it's, I had one, I had a Grant one, I, I, it was all original but the, the hardware on it was absolutely pants and I did it up, I put like Wilkinson pickups in it and Epiphone parts and proper tuners and I, I put it on eBay for a, that was what the last eBay auction I did, I think I started at 80 quid or something like that thinking it's going to get about 200 and I got like 81 quid for it and it was a total, like, so I'm not, I'm not doing any more auctions, um, auctions are good for buying but not for selling in case you get bit like that, I think I just chose the wrong day you know, maybe it was at the, the wrong time of the month or something like that, or nobody was looking, but um, somebody got a grant, which I think is pretty much the same as this, apart from the hardware on them's pants, but as you see, it's not that difficult to upgrade them these days. Um, this has got ping tuners on it, which I think are probably 50 quid's worth, um, because I don't think you could, it was the same with all, all parts, you couldn't buy, the only aftermarket parts you could get would be probably ping tuners, grovers, that was kind of it. You, you couldn't buy like, oh, I just want to replace the ones that are on the ones that work. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have to buy. It's only aftermarket selling expensive stuff. Same with your pickups. You know, if you're, if you're, it's nineteen seventy nine. You've got this guitar and the bridge pickups burst. Your really only option to replace it is to buy a Demarzio or try and find a second hand one. And the second hand ones you're going to get are ones where somebody's bought Demarzios for the Gibson and they're selling on the Gibson pickups. The hence these, I think. Obviously, the second part of the video will be all bit, or might be very different. So, um, but it is a nice guitar. Um, it's about as good as a Les Paul as I've come across. Again, it's just that the only thing about it being bought on, um, you get the, the snobs who just like will not even look at a boat on neck Les Paul. Um, I mean, you know, how, how much? How much is? Okay, there's a custom shop strat, couple of grand. They're red. They're bought on. Custom shop Les Pauls aren't bought on them. Anyhow, rock on. Oh, our live stream's back on. I've moved on to Sundays. Um, I'm in the studio tomorrow. Um, but I finish at 2 o'clock, so I should have plenty of time to try and work out something to talk about. Um, I was expecting a guitar in the post today, but it's been delayed, which is annoying because yesterday I had it right down to at your local depot. And I was like, because it was meant to come yesterday. It's maybe something to do with why the guitar's on the wall or uh, this particular range. And um then today it's looking at it and it's no longer it's gone back the way so i don't know what's happening it's still in transit to my local depot so i don't know when that's going to arrive um 
That's why last night's video was a bit of a, a mess. <laughs> when I was doing the... I was kind of running out of time thinking, oh, am I going to get... I was, when I was doing the video, I was kind of expecting the, the guitar to arrive. I thought that would be a nice wee... It's like, you know, hearing the doorbell, sort of live action, go and get it, and then, wow, here we go, what's in the box? So there will be a What's in the Box episode coming on Monday night or Tuesday or whenever this guitar arrives. Uh, I was messing about with the, the wee mini bass um, here, which the, the concept's working, so I'll probably be buckifying this, making a scratch flight for it. What I'm trying to do is work out some way of um, fitting the preamp in it, because um, it's got like a piezo bridge in below this. There's a few wee things I can do to modify it. I just didn't, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure it was going to work at all before I went to the effort of painting it, making stuff for it, then putting it together and finding out it was going to be absolutely done. Um, it's going to be a sort of, a sort of novelty thing. These things, these things kind of sound like an upright bass, which is what they're meant to do, and it's like, I don't really like the sound of an upright bass, but I mean, for camping or playing in the car or something, it might be quite good. It's actually, you can kind of, if you're just sitting in the house on your own, playing unplugged, You can actually learn stuff on it. I was sort of working out some Sabbath songs on it yesterday when I was watching telly. For that, it was quite good. You know, just for working out wee bits. And I, I, I actually forgot to mention on this, um, it's missing the first fret. But I don't know if maybe I did mention that. And it really, I was, I, I was aware it was missing the first fret. But again, I wanted to make sure it worked before I spent any time. Um, and it really, I've been playing it, and it really goes to show I very rarely use the first fret on a bass or on this bass maybe just because see because it's such a short scale it kind of the first two frets is kind of the size of the first fret on a bass and it's like that I don't know they seem very close together but I really I was amazed that it didn't, it didn't really affect me so if anyone ever hands, hands me a bass you know we're having a jam and they let's you know yeah, do you want to play this bass I'm afraid it doesn't have a first fret I think I'm going to be sort of alright as long as the song's not an F um should be laughing. And I got my, um, I got some parts from John Birch, who made Tony Iommi's guitar. You probably know that. And uh, Dave Hill from um, Slade Super Yob. He also made guitars for Roy Wood. Um, so I bought pickup rings. So the plan is, they sent me the wrong one. So I got, I got my, I got my pickup ring. I thought, yeah, that's great. I wonder if. If a, if a standard P90 is going to fit in it, but it's like pure yip, and I might even be a little bit sneaky and, and engrave on the top something because the John Birch original pickups, um, these aren't them, they're P90s, they've, they've actually got extra screw holes in them. Um, I'm kind of toying with the idea of just drilling holes and sticking screws in. It's not going to harm anything, but I'm, I might do that and I might en engrave on it Malco Flux because I think it's Hyper Flux they normally say on them. Yeah, so I've got this, this pickup ring. And then the one I got with it was this one. I thought, right, and it's um, it's uh, for a mini humbucker. So I wrote back and said, look, you've given me the wrong one. So they sent me the right one. So assume that fits. Yeah. So I've now got my two uh, genuine John Birch parts, so that when I do my Tony Iommi Monkey SG, I can write John Birch in massive letters all over it, saying, using genuine John Birch parts, da 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 da, and it's really only the pickup rings. But hey, um, also it means I've got a mini humbucker. One which I will be putting on my Firebird that I made myself, partly because well I've got I've got it, uh, but also I didn't do a great job of writing out the pickups on that on that guitar. You can sort of see down the sides, and I think this is slightly bigger than the one that's on it, so it might cover a bit of a hole. And then I can also say genuine John Birch parts used to make this guitar, and people are thinking, all oh, right, what is it? The neck, the body, the pickups, the tune? No, it's just the pickup rings, but. Fun. Rock on and catch you tomorrow night for the live stream. Um, I might not actually even bother buying a bottle of Bucky. I'm going to make an El Dorado bass. I might buy a half bottle of LD because I notice I've got some Bucky left from last week. Not quite half a bottle, but that half a bottle of LD and then one of the wee Magnums is probably quite a nice wee tonic wine triple bill that uh, might keep me going. Rock on, catch you later. <laughs>